Can I ask you about the third quarter performance? How satisfied are you with it, given it did seem to miss some estimates from analysts, uh, or were they on the wrong track? <laughs> Well, we can't affect the weather, unfortunately, and, and uh, this uh, quarter was, uh, was of, of course, third quarter is typically seasonally weak, but now it was characterized by quite high volatility in power, commodity and CO2 prices, and especially dry weather, which affected our, our hydro, hydro volume. So there's very little we can do about that. But uh, those things on the operational side, which we can affect, they went actually pretty well. So I'm, I'm happy. Uh, you know, some people would argue that we can and do affect the weather, especially with regards to climate change. I wonder how that's going to affect Fordham's uh, Nordic hydro output this year. Um, how, do you, how do you look at climate change as affecting your business specifically? Well, first of all, we are extremely concerned, and we have noted the IPCC report, and we are calling for for significantly higher ambition level in the in the EU EU climate uh, policy. Uh, it's very difficult to see how it would directly affect our our business. We saw actually this this summer some uh, unusual situations. We had to downregulate our nu nuclear production because of the high temperature in the seawater. We had uh, forest fires in Sweden that affected uh, transmission lines. Uh, so it is this type of uh, incidents that are, are definitely definitely supporting supporting all the assumptions that there are behind the effects of the climate change. So we are concerned, uh, worried, and we are absolutely of the opinion that uh, the power industry and, and uh, basically the society as a whole, we need to reduce CO2 emissions as quickly as possible. Can I ask you about the stru structure of your business and your investments, Pekka? Um, how stable is your relationship with Uniper right now? Can you see a situation where you'd be able to take on a bigger holding there? Well, uh, we do not comment uh, what uh, our plans are in terms of the development of the holding, uh, but the relationship is stable. We have to remember that this is still very early days. We closed uh, our uh, investment at the end of the second quarter. Uh, our CFO has now been appointed as uh, vice chairman of the uh, supervisory board uh, of Uniper, and uh, our uh, goal uh, continues to be that we would get into good operational cooperation with Uniper and that way develop a good relationship with them. What do you think about the uh, the M and A situation in the industry, Pekka? I mean, you've said in the past you expect it to pick up this year. Um, you don't expect the Chinese to play a huge role in European M and A, but how do you think? How do you see things shaking out? Uh, I believe that this uh, M&A trend that we are seeing will will continue, and, and uh, large utilities, especially, they are focusing more uh, and more, and they are, are, are seeking more scale uh, within those segments that they have selected. We divested our distribution grids uh, a few years ago in order to be able to consolidate our uh, our generation and uh, consumer businesses. Uh, German uh, E.ON and uh, RWE, they are also doing large transactions at the moment and uh, there's a lot happening on the M&A front at the moment within European utilities and uh, as said I expect that to continue. And Pekka how do you see your exposure to Russia developing? The weakness in the currency has perhaps uh, caused you to, to, to think hard about your exposure in that country and some suggest that maybe your holdings of uh, water assets in Russia might stand in the way of further exposure to Uniper. Tell us about Russia. We are uh, reasonably satisfied with our uh, development in Russia. We had a good quarter, actually. Actually, the Russian division had uh, had the best operational performance of all our divisions in this uh, quarter. And, uh, and uh, of course, the large uh, investment programs that we have made, they have already been completed. Now we are investing in, in renewables. We have become the leading wind uh, developer uh, in Russia, and this is really important when we are reducing also our, our CO2 uh, exposure uh, in Russia. But in general, that market has uh, treated us uh, well, and, uh, and uh, the uh, political uh, tensions that uh, there obviously are, they have not uh, affected uh, our business in any way. Yesterday we saw a big drop in the oil price, Pekka, kind of reminding us that volatility um, definitely lurks in these commodities markets. I wonder what you think about um, levels and sustainability of energy and carbon prices here. Well, uh, the carbon price development obviously uh, has been uh, quite 
positive because we are of the opinion that uh, that a strong carbon market with uh, increasing prices would be the best policy tool to drive decarbonization of, uh, of uh, the uh, energy uh, industry uh, as a whole. Uh, prices are volatile and uh, everything is affecting everything. Uh, oil prices are connected to some other connect commodities. CO2 prices uh, is highly connected to uh, gas prices and to some extent coal prices uh, as well. And, uh, and the general trend has been uh, upwards, which is positive, but high volatility. And, and uh, of course, we don't give any forecast for the future, but we are clearly in this camp that is supporting policy mechanisms and policy policy uh, decisions uh, that would uh, uh, increase the ambition level in climate policy and, and uh, carbon pricing should be the key tool in this.